Gunner. <laughs> the all and powerful, that, boy, ladies and gentlemen, that, the all and powerful Sam Hall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Have you got the Joe Rogan drum roll and all that old business. Sorry. Have you got the Joe Rogan drum roll and all that? <laughs> there you go, mate. Good enough. We're making our own I'm thing, there. you know. It's our own brand, isn't it? With all the leg- legends yeah, yeah, on it. Much better, much better than that amateur Joe Rogan. Mm. Amateur oh, hour. With millions of listens. God, right, you're ready then? Bites make me look really, really wrinkly. No, that is just how you look. <laughs> this are like, it's making me look really tanned. Yeah, Wait, do you it want to see some hair? Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Put it away! Put it back! I might get a hat. I, I would. Yeah. Have that potato out of yours. <laughs> <laughs> God, oh my God! He looks like... Brad Pitt. Oh no, Nick. Nick, take that off, man. That's bad. That's he real bad. Like, um, Brad Pitt. Jones's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to another isolation special. Uh, here again with my man Nick Danes, as always. Lewis. Not below me today. Usually you are oh, underneath me. Yeah. And today our guest is Steve Ladley, Black Belt, Carson Gracie Ashford. He is the man. Oi, oi. Hey, Steve. <laughs> How is everyone doing? Very well. I've got a, First of all, how are you, man? How are you? A pink gin and tonic. I'm, I'm doing good. Look at that. We're all late night special, this one. Straight up, mm. I just want, to, just want to say two things. First of all, first of all, I'm sorry to the Colson Gracie Ashford Brotherhood because since this whole lockdown nonsense has started, I've just not had the ability to be involved with the online stuff and going to the gym and that because I don't know if you've seen on social media, but my circumstances have been quite unusual and quite different to the average Well, person. we're going to so talk about that. I've had to remove myself from everything, unfortunately. And second, just how upset I am about all this, because the last time I trained was the 11th of March and today oh. is the 20th of April. My gi, my belt, is all still packed from the competition that got cancelled, but the oh. geezer pulled out. We went. I'm, we went. I'm still annoyed. I'm still annoyed about that because I was ready to go. <laughs> I was ready to watch. I was ready to watch that one. 100%. Yeah, I was. We still knew you still got some die that day. You still got some questions to answer about that because uh, I don't see why you didn't do the absolute. My missus wouldn't let me. <laughs> fair enough. To be fair, yeah. she was actually like right. <laughs> At that point, when we went to that competition, I still think thought it was all going to blow over. And like mm. now, look at us. Do you know what I mean? We're in isolation. So yeah. she had a really good point there. I think everyone did. I think that's kind of why the competition still went ahead. I think if they knew then what they knew, now. what they know now, yeah. they wouldn't have done it. <clears throat> it was it was like, what was it? It was the Saturday before we all got isolated. Yeah, so. yeah it was the Saturday. Well, there wasn't that many black belts there, to be fair. Was there not? I, I knew did... I was going to come and kill them all. <laughs> I was, Humble. I'm, I'm, That's I'm what so I like annoyed you, because I was so hungry for that. I was so hungry that day, mate. Yeah. You trained so really hungry. hard for it. I was ready. I was ready. Especially coming off the back of that shoulder injury, I was ready. But mm. yeah, so I would have done the absolute because I, I felt like my fitness was ready. I was good to go. I had a good game. Um, but quite frankly, the missus was not happy about me going anyway. Yeah. And then yeah. on that Friday night when the fella pulled out, she was just like... You're not going, are you? So I was like, nah, probably not. And that was it. And then you, then you sent us a photo with a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. Haven't trained since. Probably going to give up jiu-jitsu and take up taekwondo. Oh, you're not, you, you, your name's not Mark. The answer, yeah. <laughs> you're not a blue belt, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no you're not allowed now. to give up now. <laughs> right, so, so that's, that's my, that was my opening piece. I just wanted to say those two things because they, they, they've, they've been a heavy weight on my shoulders. Have they? This, this, yeah, they have. They have. Mm. You don't they need have. to worry, man. Everyone no. understands your circumstances, and we've all been following and you know sending our messages of support for all you're doing, as well as like the home life is fucking hard, mate. So fair yeah. play. 
Yeah, no, so, appreciate so you're on the front lines, it. Ches, really. You've, um, you're a firefighter when not rolling around on the mat. So what's been going on then? So tell us what you've been doing. Um, I, again, my circumstances are slightly different to some of the other boys, but there's been quite a few guys off of my watch that have signed up to go and help the LAS doing driving ambulances and stuff like that. So they've been pretty full on. A couple of other guys have been doing some other stuff that is really not pretty. But again, I, I can't do that again because my situation. So, um, I've so just explain, been... explain it, explain because um, we got us, we know it, but like maybe it'd be good for people to hear what your situation is and why that's affecting you. Uh, so, so, much. so my, my situation is I've got two children, both with their own special sort of little circumstances. And in particular, my daughter was born with a, a rare heart condition. And basically, it's not saying that she's particularly susceptible to it, but because it's so rare and unknown that she's on that sort of vulnerable list. So because yeah. of that, I temporarily moved out for three weeks. Uh, and then I couldn't also do the other duties that some of the other boys off my team volunteered to do, um, which is amazing. They, they're doing a fantastic job up there because they're, they're seeing and doing things that, quite frankly, no one really wants to be doing. So fair play yeah. to them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but since then it's unfolded a little bit further my missus has started to show uh symptoms so i'm now sort of in deep isolation back at home with them for two weeks so oh man it's been a bit of a roller coaster but off the off the flip side of that it also has meant that i've not been able to go anywhere near the gym i've not been able to go anywhere near anyone other than basically my, my the guys that i work with so yeah it's been interesting it's been interesting Un- i think this understandably is, we're all so though, mate. Forever. yeah it's understandably mm-hmm. so i don't think anyone like questions why why you're not around mate or like do you know what i mean why we haven't heard your yeah. you know <clears throat> but no i just wanted to clear that up just in case because yeah because not, not everyone knows but now they do so so it's good <laughs> but it doesn't mean i've i'm doing anything other than that so it's all good it's all good yeah. but i'm looking forward to now getting right involved with what you boys have got for me tonight so <laughs> so let's do it well nick's nick's let's the man with the plan to be honest with you nick nick's written questions and to be honest with you i've got nothing <laughs> Absolutely well, nothing. yeah, mate. I'm, I'm, I'm keen because you know I've, I've known, uh, I've known Steve for, a, for a long time. Before uh, we trained jujitsu together in the church halls, the first time we trained jujitsu. No, yeah, there maybe probably there, and then a bit at Tunbridge. But I knew Steve before then, as well as you know uh, Ben and Warren and Sam and all those guys at the same, same kind of time when all this stuff was happening and, and lowering it in, in that era um so I, there's you know having known c for a long time i haven't really like talked about uh, with him you know a lot of things really about jiu-jitsu and and, and why he enjoys it and, and, and why he does it to start with so it's be quite interesting to to get some of that as well so like um uh, first thing I was going to, so we'll leap straight in with, with some of the stuff that I've thought about then really, Steve, because like we, we train a lot together, like you, me and Sam, like uh, complement each other's games quite a lot in, in, in it being quite a good matchup and, and good fun sparring. So we all have fun like fighting each other and I usually end up going away thinking, oh God, I've got to, I've got to get better and I've got to do this, I've got to do that. But why was it that you were attracted to jiu-jitsu to start with was there something someone that got you into it or did you get into it from other means what was it about jiu-jitsu that that got you into it i think it was just doing it actually doing it because i've i've been very lucky i've tried a lot of martial arts i've trained over the years quite a lot of martial arts of varying sort of different sports and different genres and everything and you, I kind of got bored of one thing, moved to the next, thought it was nonsense, moved to the next, hop, skipped and jumped all over the place. And there was, I think, two reasons. One, I really enjoyed jiu-jitsu. And two, out of everything that I'd done, maybe other than like pretty hardcore Thai boxing, it was the only one that I ever actually thought was, do you know what, if someone jumps me in the street, I'm going to mess them up. Or do you know what, if someone attacks my child or my wife, I'm going to mess them up. And in a fairly convincing sort of way that, it's not going to get me in trouble. It's not going to look barbaric. It's going to look quite controlled. It's going to be quite sort of restrained. And it's just very effective in, in many different sort of walks of life, really. So, yeah. But how did you reasons. find out about it, though? Like, how did you find out about jujitsu in the first place? Because the only way, I, I, when I started, um, 
back in 2010, I was watching UFC and I was like, well, the getting punched in the face bit doesn't look too good. Uh, I think I'd rather try the grappling because it looks a little... Do you a favour, mate. With my, with my rugged, yeah. with my real good looks. So, um... You're not Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so like that's kind of how... And I remember going to the gym because I, I used to train in the Olympians gym in Ashford and I saw a Gracie jiu-jitsu card. It was like a business card stuck on like like a um just on a wall with like where like plumbers and stuff were all put up there and that's how i found carlson gracie how was it yeah it was because i was like i uh, i was getting bored of going to the gym one. sorry the one under the stir center car park no so it moved from there it was actually in the ellingham industrial estate at that point right and um so when I, that's, I saw the little business card and then I emailed Laurie. I remember emailing, I didn't know it was Laurie at the time. And I just remember emailing them. And that's when I turned up to the church hall, which is where I met you, actually. First, my first class. I remember you, Chess. Welcome. Me because you double arm barred me about five times in a row. Chess, just, <laughs> just, um, just to give you a bit of uh, background, Sam has spoken about his introduction to jiu-jitsu um, where he sparred and you featured heavily in, uh, in the introduction to Sam Hall's jiu-jitsu and how you can bend arms the wrong way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, well, I, I turned up because I did the classic where you, I turned up to the class and I was like, I'm just going to watch because I don't really know like if I'm going to enjoy it. I don't know if I'm going to like the people. So I turned up and I was like, so I'm here just to, you know, watch the class. And Loz was like, Loz straight away was like, I think I've got a gi in the car. If you I'll borrow the gi, you can come in, you can come and train. And I was like, oh, I can't say no. I'm going to look like a right pussy. So I was <laughs> like, I've got to do it. So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, grab the gi, of course. And then, I, and then obviously I put it on. It's all patched. And then <laughs> you double arm barred me about five times. And you're like, Afterwards, you're like, how long have you been training? And I was like, this is my first class. And you're like, oh, I thought you've been doing it for ages because you've got like a really <laughs> nice key and it's all patched. <laughs> well, nah, mate. I do genuinely remember that. <laughs> You'd have done the same thing now, though, if he came along and you knew him. Like, it, yeah. it wouldn't have changed. <laughs> yeah, you don't take, the thing is, don't take your chances with these white belts these days. Mate, well, you can't. Look at you Danny can't. Lane. Look at Danny Lane. Well, you can't. Mm. I've got a question about this, right? As well, Ches. So, like, we, we could, we, I, I could, this could seamless, seamlessly move into this, right? It would have done it's, if you hadn't, have, if you hadn't have done that plug. <laughs> like, it's different now than it was 10, 12 years ago, isn't it? Jiu Jitsu, um, in the amount we can train, the level of instruction you know, the facilities that we're using. You were talking about having trained in a, a church hall before where you, we used to all get the mats out together, wipe the mats down after and put them away. And now we, you know, we, we're lucky enough to get to train in a, in a, a full-time facility with all the, all the bells and whistles, and it's great. So what, um, how have you seen the evolution and, and change of, like, how because you, you've, you've been here the whole time how it's changed and, and what's happening in the jiu-jitsu for us. What, one thing that I think is very important that I, I, I do do my best to do is to constantly try to explain this to the newer guys, you know, sort of like the, the two or three stripe white belts who are like, oh, this is amazing, this is awesome. I, I do take the time quite often. I think they sit there and they go, oh, he's boring me again. But I sort of do try yeah. to explain that, that what we've got now isn't something that's just happened. It isn't something that overnight luckily sort of accidentally got created there's, there's been a decade well now 11 years of, of hard work put into Colson Gracie and arguably another 10 years worth of training before that for some people um, and I mean you, you look at some of the new guys now who started say last Christmas you've got on some days you've got six black belts there you've got six black belts yeah. you've got four brown some, belts it's unreal it's unreal some real. And you can train pretty much every day. Some days you can train twice a day. And again, you'll have a couple of black belts there. You'll have a couple of brown belts there. It's, it's unbelievable. And, and also, luckily for us, it's not just, are oh, there six black belts who are older guys, who are injured guys. You've got, you've got a handful of black belts there who are not just legit, but they're, they're pretty high level guys. You know, they're, they're pretty sort of national, national standard guys. Competition standard black belts. Like you yeah. talk 
earlier about you were you were gonna you were supposed to compete at uh, grappling industries in London last month. Um, Danny Langford, uh, Luke Holness, Harry Lowsby, all the all these guys compete regularly, you know, and medal nationally. Mm. And it's it's amazing. I, Ian Hall, all these guys. I mean, he's much better than his his, his brother. <laughs> 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 I can't even. I can't even deny it. That's the problem. But I think that we're. I, I, sometimes I think it can be. And even even you know, however long ago, you know, all these guys who are putting themselves out there now. And if you look at the blue belts, you know, Matt Witt, Kane Barnes, these guys are going out there and competing in all the competitions they can win, lose, draw, whatever. They're going to go to the next ones and keep going, keep going. And they are getting so good. Very good. Yeah. But this comes back to what I was saying at, like, at the beginning, because jiu-jitsu as a, as a sport, I think, is going to exponentially grow. But in, in particular, in our club, that's reflected even more so, I think, because we started from practically nothing and built it up, grassroots up to what we've got now. And it's just going to keep multiplying. You know, by the end of the year, I'm guessing there's going to be another black belt. Um, by the end of the year, there's potentially another couple of brown belts. There's, there's, every time it shifts up, the club yeah. grows and it gives the club more potential to grow and grow. It's just that exponential growth that, I mean, you go down the line another five years, it, it could be huge. It could be huge in the club as a, as a whole and as a sport, the whole thing could be just amazing. It could be amazing. I hope so. I hope so. It's, it's crazy though, isn't it? Like, you know, I step into my first class and there's four blue belts there. And That's now the, people the step belt. into the mat and there's like six black belts. Yeah, the blue belts were the equivalent of black belts in those days, though. Yeah, you know, that's why I think it's very important. I think it's really important for the for the younger generation to appreciate that they don't just take it for granted. They don't just sort of turn up and go, "Oh, there's only two black belts on the mat tonight," or "Oh, Sam's taking a class and he's only a four stripe brown belt." You know, everyone needs to appreciate that <laughs> what we what we've got isn't just your normal sort of setup. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, it isn't a normal setup. I think yeah. I think that no. all the time. Like I think we. I think it's easy to take for granted the the levels that are like in normal operation. What, you know, what, what I have noticed is that there are a lot more people that stick around these days. But I think mm. I was thinking about this the other day when we were chatting to Lars, and I was thinking maybe because we've got so many of the other belts in club, we've got literally every belt in club. People see it as attainable. I think sometimes mm. like the blue belt itis phase used to happen a lot more mm. you know back when i first started and i think because people couldn't see the path to black belt there was only a handful at the time and now when people see that black belts brown belts purple belts all train within the club they they know what's attainable they know they can get there if they keep training but when you don't have that visual representation at your club all the time it's easy to think that's as far as you're probably going to get because you'll never be as good as the guy who's teaching you mm. or you'll never be as good as the guy who's kicking your ass every week. But reality is, is, you know, time on the mat and being there and, and, you know, turning up. It's all it takes really, you know, keep training. It's all it takes. I, I am, <laughs> I'm the epitome of that. And, uh, and that guy. <laughs> that guy that guy even more so mm. even more so than me because you were technically training jujitsu before me nick yeah well oh, don't embarrass him i i um i just i i i got into it i really enjoyed it and like i knew a lot of people that did other bits like you and Loz and that and you know ben and sam and everyone that you know did all different stuff and you know, John Weir as well, you know, I trained with grappling a lot and uh, boxing, which didn't do my nose any favours. But, um, like... Well, just boxing know, in general, John Weir will not do any favours. <laughs> it seems to be this, um, the, the doorman in Ashford, they seem to be a load of arseholes. They seem to be the ones that are all right, tra train like uh, grappling. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so that, that eliminated half of them from, from uh, discussion, basically. But it was a... Yeah, I trained with uh, Linton as well. Like um, Linton, um, you know, you know, Lin, 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 Lin trained a lot. Yeah, uh, with Alexis and Paul at London Shoot Fighters, and so we trained um, like nogi grappling, submission wrestling type thing on a Sunday morning. But the, then, then like six hours in the pub after tended to um, 
like have a slight detrimental effect on the training. Um, when I was really super, super keen, I'd do training 10 to 12 in Tenton with Lynn and then go drive straight to Tunbridge with John for one o'clock till three o'clock with Wilson at the Angel Centre. But um, yeah, I was kind of like, you know, doing, like I really enjoyed it, but like was not uh, keen on going out of my comfort zone at that point. And, um, and then when I started training, uh, when I, I got a new job in London so I could uh, get off the train at Tunbridge and go to the Angel Centre, train jiu-jitsu on a Wednesday night, get back on the train and go. But, you know, I wouldn't get home till like 10, half 10, and I uh, have to leave again at 6. And, it, like, I uh, doing that. I did that for, like, two and a half years. I was training up there. And then when Laurie started Ashford, uh, I trained there for tra- as much as I could. But I think we did, uh, I think it was Tuesday, Thursdays. First, first Tuesday. Yeah. Um, and then, then my job moved and it was like the times didn't quite match. And like, you know what I mean? When there's not training all the time, it, it becomes difficult. If you miss a week, then miss another week. You think, oh, I can't fit this in. And it, it becomes difficult. And I think at that point, I, I really, really liked it. And then other things got in the way. And then I kept seeing Laurie and you like around. And then you said, come and come. Annoyingly. Train. Got this new like facility. And I was like, Oh, fuck. My, my missus went, yeah, you should. I think I was getting under her feet at the time. I said, yeah, you should. <laughs> I'm fat. And I went and trained. And I saw, like, within a week, I saw you, Dan Biddle, like, Laurie, obviously, and, like, other people that I knew before. And I was like, oh, I'm back, I'm back in, basically. I think I can't get out of it now. And then I was like, I love it. This is just, you know, I, I'm disappointed that I stopped training when I did. Um you know, because it was, it used to, I just remember having, in the church hall, me and Steve used to have great battles from close guard of, you know, one of us trying to pass the other one's guard and the other one trying to armbar that one. Like, that's our, that's the main move that we're trying to do. Like, I'm trying to armbar you and he's trying to pass my guard and that, that is it. There's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't give all my secrets away. <laughs> it's not a secret, it's just really hard to stop. That was both. That was both. You know, Steve's a, a black belt. You know, and, and we were both white belts at the time, just like trying to trying to. And Steve, Steve's like uh, close guard. It's just got better and better and better and better. And it's not a place I want to be now. I can tell you that. Back then, you used to think, "Oh, it's fifty-fifty. I might pass. He yeah. might armbar me." You know. Now I'm like, I don't even want to go there. If I can avoid this at all, then I'm avoiding it because that's not. Like he will call it his plan B, but that plan B he's worked on for about ten years. Yeah. So I'm not having it. I'm not having any of this plan B bollocks. Yeah. Like, I don't believe <laughs> well, you. Well, Nick, I knew I knew my plan B was working really well when I went for that period of uh, rolling with Danny Lane, catching him on my closed guard, and his uh, immediate action was to roll so that I was bending <laughs> mount to escape my guard. So I knew my plan B was working. <laughs> To be fair, I'm considering that next time we roll, I will do it. It's effective. That. It's an effective guard pass. <laughs> I'd rather be mounted than. <laughs> well, he's got an opportunity for knee barring at black belt. You can knee bar, so he's thinking. He's thinking about other transitions there for a, a, a go at submission. Maybe he's looking for an advantage. But one thing I know a hundred percent is that. No one in Carlson Gracie Ashford wants to be in Steve Bradley's guard. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got, I've got two things from what we were just saying there, right? So first thing then, Nick, so what year did you officially start training at Tunbridge then? Because I've, I've got, like I said, I've got my timeline here. I'm just seeing where that would have been. Show us. 2007. Look at that. He's actually got oh, a jujitsu yeah. timeline. Well, just because I knew that you guys are going to ask me some sneaky questions and my brain's not functioning properly. We're not, trying to, we're not going to try and catch you out. We just want to chat. Mate, you've so been t- like... Uh, you, you, I remember when you first come into... Well, when I... you, I think you started training with like Ben... Ben, uh, when we were training... When Laurie and um, Adam Coombs were like doing sessions at his church hall. Um, and you look massive, like you look bit, like super hench. So I was like, Jesus, Steve looks like he's bolted up. Like, <laughs> and you well, rocked there, up. Go ahead. <laughs> <There> was, <laughs> sorry, it all froze a second there. 
there, there, there was a time where I was well into my weightlifting training with Carl Kennett and um, I mean that, there was, there was a, a period there where I was about 108 kilos and I was deadlifted 250 I was bench I was training for my 180 bench you know I was a, I was quite a large boy at, at one stage and that, that coincided with um, probably about that time so yeah, I wouldn't want it to have grappled with myself back then because it, it wouldn't have been pleasant. Yeah, but yeah, I, I looked at myself like, all drunk. Fucking hell! Right? <laughs> He's That's thick. Not yeah. Big boy. It's like when you sent me that video of you when you travelled around Thailand, and you look really <laughs> thick then, so thick and hench. So that must have been. Yeah. When was that? Uh, Thailand. Uh, that was. Oh, that, that wasn't that long ago. That was 2013, that was. Was it really? Yeah. Still so I knew you then. Yes. Well, I rolled with you when you were like that. Oof. Yeah, but I've seen yeah. a photo of you, Sam, where you look like a, like a <laughs> very strange... Like, like, like the Pillsbury Doughboy. But you must have been eating a lot of pasta. <laughs> Mate, I, I will always remember that. Me and my brother were really into weight training. And one, and one uh, year... It was like over the winter and we were like, we're going to bulk up over the winter. So we're going to eat loads of calories and train really hard, lift really heavy weights. So me and Ian practically ate the same amount every day. And Ian looked like um, a professional wrestler. <laughs> he was massive <laughs> and all ripped. And I had a pot belly. <laughs> I look really fat. Just <laughs> me that, and Ian have been eating the same stuff. Like, like this? Yeah. <laughs> Probably lethargic from all the food that I've been eating. If you want to see it, it will be on the website. Oh, you'll be Podcast.co.uk. We'll put it on the website so everyone can see it if you're interested. Um, but he looks, I mean, you wouldn't recognise him. <laughs> really good. I saw that hair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I think um, it was about 2007 when I turned out I like um, messaged Dave Broughton because I remember um, at the time it was the, the Broughton brothers Paul and Dave and um, Paul for MMA and you know this that I was like oh god that sounds a little bit you know um, aggressive for me and, uh, and I thought oh no it's the only way I can possibly go to any jiu-jitsu anywhere near me is going to Tunbridge because of where I was working and coming home and logistics and all the rest of it and so and Dave was just like really sound on the phone so I, I gave him a phone he was like yeah yeah look come down come down and um went down so every wednesday i got off the train and then ran as fast as i could to get to the angel center because the uh, the time was like minimal to get to get there and i think every other wednesday wilson jr taught um so it was you know extra good when he came down otherwise it was like uh uh dave Mutley, um, Gorby, um, teach him as blue belts, I think at the time. Um, other blue belts that was all, were already blue belts when I started, it was like Keith Casson was already a blue belt. Um, a couple of others, I trained a lot with Rob Dawes. I remember Rob got his purple belt at the same time as Dave, we went up to London. Uh, I don't remember to Rob, I've never, I'd never heard of Rob. Rob was absolutely, fucking brilliant like he yeah. trained like Thai boxing he went to Canada to train wrestling like full time wow. for a while before MMA this is like 2008 maybe nine probably yeah. nine I think Laurie Laurie went to the Europeans in 2008 came back and got his blue belt in Tunbridge I was there when that happened I never say oh, to talk about it obviously <laughs> it was like a never, oh, I was there when, I got, when Lod's got his blue belt oh my god it was so amazing <laughs> Laurie about in like 2008 I think in 2009 we used to do these interclubs at Hammersmith where we would go up from Tunbridge uh, and there'd be like matchups at the boiler the old boiler room there and um and then I uh, about this boiler room I, I didn't know it's it was like I got um, my blue belt in the boiler room it's a pretty cool place man like it was so tell, tell us about that because um getting saw, sawdust really Wilson, Wilson is, uh, he's uh, pretty well known for his big slams and he did one on you, didn't he? Killed me. Absolutely killed me. Not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> Not even joking. Well, there's, there is actually a bit of a story there, actually, because um, I've, I've been up to the boiler room, I think, once before. And yeah, How long have you been training at this point? 
six months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I started in the June. I think it was pretty much June 09 I started. And this was Christmas uh, the same year. And there was a few of us went up there. I can't, I can't remember who, but we went up there. And they were, they were doing like the classic call out sort of thing. And like I think the the front, uh, out the front in front of everyone. Well, it was a classic Wilson, you, <laughs> you. <laughs> and then there'd been a few of them as white belts and then they were sort of gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then there was a sort of a, a you, and then he sort of went, well, you look fairly big. And I guess I, I sort of fitted a, a suitable <laughs> opponent. And I was like, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll have a go sort of thing. And, and long story short, not butting myself up, but absolutely demolished the geese and armbarred him from the closed guard in about, I want to say 30 seconds, but it may have been a minute. And I think he sort of got a bit of attention and then another sort of couple of rounds went by and there was another sort of, you, you again, sort of thing. <laughs> and exactly, exactly the same happened. I, I, I sort of took the geezer down. Can't remember, I think I met Armbard in from Mount on the second fight. And I think it just caught everyone's attention. And I remember um, Simon asking Laurie who I was, what I was, what on earth was going on sort of thing. And I remember Laurie saying, well, yeah, he's one of my guys and he's, he's here to stay sort of thing. And yeah, I got my blue belt off the back of that by beating really? up the guys. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I was really happy with that to get my blue belt in six months. That is unreal. Right. Yeah. It took, Nick, like, it took Nick I, I, 36 you're, years. You're lying. You're lying if you tell, like, six months, man. Like, you have done a lot of stuff. Like, and I just don't want people to think that it's possible. Like, it is possible, obviously. But you need to be a special sort of guy, like, to do that. Like, it's not often that you get Simon Hayes and uh, Wilson Jr. going, who's that guy over there, that white belt? Who's uh, who's just smashed you to beat up my right. guys? Yeah, because yeah. you know he's putting you against someone he thinks gonna fuck you up. Yeah, then you fuck them up. It's similar to Sam Sam Hall here when he got his uh, purple belt, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't. Do you know? If I don't you make fuck decisions. Up a guy that's supposed to get their belt badly. You, <laughs> you're probably gonna get a belt at that point. Like you know. If, yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't work that way, or it shouldn't work that way in reality, yeah, but it should it? And that's why jiu-jitsu is beautiful. <laughs> I think Wilson, Wilson right it's the though. Survival of the fittest. Yeah, but Wilson is very, like, Darwin, like, Darwinian, isn't he? Wilson, like, he, he puts the people together. He's always done this, Wilson, will always put the people together. He mixes the thing up, and he goes, right, I think this and that, and that, does it. And then he's like, yeah, you, I think you're right, ready for a belt. Especially white belt to blue belt, you know? Yeah. It's a big jump. It's a big, big jump. Yeah. Big deal as well, man. Big deal. It's a big deal. I, all I used to think about in Tunbridge, all I, I used to think, God, I can beat that guy, or can I do this, or can I do that, can I do that? And now there's, you know, all the you guys, high level guys. And I think, yeah, no, it's achievable if I train hard and I try and mm. do things, maybe, but maybe in double the time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What day, so, Wilson then awarded you your blue belt. Then what happened? What did he do? Monkey bombed me. He, <laughs> he picked me up, put my head up in the cobwebs and monkey bombed me and I bounced <laughs> twice. <laughs> Amazing. And then you got to get whipped after yeah. that. Oh, and I think, I think back then we counted, I think it was 120 people up there. Because, I mean, even oh. back in 2009, Jiu-Jitsu at, at Hammersmith, at the, the <laughs> boiler room, there was a lot of guys there. A wow. lot of guys there. And um, the, the beating that I took from that whipping still was the worst I've ever had, even sort of up to my brown belt, because um, it was horrendous. It was 120 guys, two laps, so 240 whips minimum, plus Wilson chasing around, beating you. Yeah, you know? at least. I remember, because um, it, was, it was just one of them. I, I didn't think anything of it, because um, I, I drove there myself, because I had to go from there to work oh. straight afterwards. So I was just like... Oh. I'll meet you boys there because I'll drive to work afterwards, not expecting to get my blue belt because I didn't really think anything of it. And um, I remember having to pull over just outside Hammersmith because I thought I was going to faint. I genuinely thought I was going to faint. I, my body went into shock. I, I got absolutely beaten, beaten beyond belief. It was horrible. But at you the same time, the elation of, of sort of fighting and, and gaining your blue belt was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Do you remember uh, Karim, Karim, Karim Shah? I think he got his... I think he got his purple belt that day so i was there when he got his blue belt at um, hammersmith and watching the fights out the front and looking thinking 
he's a, he's a fucking white belt. He, mm. he, he would look just fucking unreal. Yeah. And he, like, he was like golden boy at the time. Like he, he looked so good. And it made me think, mate, before I'm that good, it's going to be like another 10, 10 years. You know, like this guy is just unreal. He's still he not just, that good now, mate. I, well, <laughs> this is it. Well, you know, that's why I follow him on Instagram. Car, <laughs> shout out. <laughs> Like, he's fucking, he looks exactly the same. He doesn't look a day older than he did then. Does he still train? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, he came back uh, to London. He got uh, his first degree. Um, mm. He trains a lot out in, like, I think it's Abu Dhabi. Like, that he lives he now. Set up, um, he set up a load of gyms in, or certainly a gym in Egypt, as far as I know. I think he set That's up Colson Gracie's high road, he, didn't he? Yeah, he lives, in, yeah, exactly that. You're right, you're oh, right. He, got, he does a lot of travelling. He's got a, his own gym. He does a lot of travelling. And he comes yeah. back to London as well and uh, and trains, but he's still still very good. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he was a so, nice guy. I, I I had a few roles with him back in the day, actually, up at Hammersmith. He was he was he was always a cool guy. But yeah, I do remember him going off and seeing something on social media that he'd, he'd opened up a gym in. I, I believe it was Colson Gracie Caro, which yeah, I thought was pretty cool. He's a very um, he's very loyal to the to the to the uh, club. I think. Um. So what, like, I got another question, uh, Steve. What do you think's changed in the last, like, 11, 12 years since you've been training um, at Ashford and Tunbridge and London um, in jiu-jitsu, like, in terms of, like, club level stuff? What's, what's different now, do you think? Something that does that always sort of amaze me, because I, I'm, I've come from a bit of a, a old-school, hardcore sort of, technique style sort of thing I, I enjoy being of the level and of a sort of a, a confidence where I can sit back and watch the trends come and go I enjoy trends because I, I don't have the brain capacity to learn much new stuff so <laughs> trends come trends go I might take one foot lock from something or, or a new guard pass but but the rubber guard come and went the half guard sort of come and went oh, big time very bows come and went um, it's still it's still here mate it's still here I'm keeping it single handedly keeping me Bernardo Farrier mate oh, I'm giving Good it class. a go come on at a lower Good level class. we're all keeping it alive here I'm a lower level half guarder <laughs> and, and, and where are we at the minute is it 50-50 is that what all the cool kids were doing before we all got locked that down sausage man you want to do some 50-50 shit mate that guy will fuck anyone up yeah. I like no I don't even want to roll with Sam I don't even want to roll with Sam he's so good mate like so good it's really but good. I can't even like we rolled the other uh, before this shit happened um, and we were uh, and he got inside control right and popped my rib from <laughs> he's trying to get to 150 kilos okay he's but now you are, up, very, he will. You are very British now at 138 138 semi sausage He's, he's fucking massive, str like super strong, very heavy, with incredible technique. Yeah. I'm well, he fucked. He me up with a, a head and arm north-south choke thing a little while ago, and I, I seriously thought he broke my neck. I, it was one of them was like, I'm not going to tap, I'm not going to tap, I'm not going to tap to a purple belt, get off. And then I literally <laughs> felt my vertebrae separated. I was like, yeah, I, I can't die today. Who would have depended on that? Not today. Next week. <laughs> yeah, not today. <laughs> Yeah, but that guy's like, I mean, he's he's obviously, you know, incredibly talented in, you know, picking up the techniques and all the rest of it. But like the application of it, it's just like if you make one one error, I find with Sam, like it, that's it, like it's done. I think, you know, you made, no... I think you made an interesting point though, Chess. I think like you've watched a lot of trends come and go, but you kind of like taken it away from yourself that you don't like. You, you don't learn anything new but the difference is is that you don't learn it to apply it for yourself but you can definitely deal with all those situations when they get thrown at you you learn how to defend them and you're you know you're not like oh, i can't learn anything new i don't want to even want to look at it because otherwise you know you're you're definitely learning is what i'm trying to get at oh 100 percent. And, and only a fool wouldn't and and i can literally thank big nick for that as well because Certainly, sort of, even this year from Christmas onwards, um, as Nick rightfully says, he's been really smashing the half guard stuff. And his half guard went from something I didn't have to worry about to overnight. I was like, hang on, this isn't my old tricks just aren't working. Mm -hmm. And he will agree, like, we spent a lot of time, rightly or wrongly, from his point of view, where he just let me 
sort of crash into the wall, crash into the wall, try new stuff, crash into the wall. I don't and let you. Like, <laughs> don't let you. <laughs> he's not trying to let you is what he's trying you to do. do. If you decide you're going to do that. <laughs> you, you, allow, you allowed my, my evolutionary game to sort of progress and uh, eventually we figured out some new stuff. And, well, we yeah. worked together on that. We worked together on that because like, you're, you're the best at doing what I'm trying to stop happen. So any kind of like small like um, win I get out of rolling with you for maybe like an hour, you know, I take that away and then try and work on that and like, you know, try, try and uh, I've got to try and analyse my, my game and like you probably do the same. So you go, oh, Nick does this and like did it really sloppy, but I can see what Sam could do or what a mm. fucking someone better could do. You know, and then you think, okay, well, maybe when I do that, actually, I've got to change it. And then um, everyone's getting some evolution from that because you know you're yeah. you're a higher level than I am. You know, I'm trying to trying to do my in my own little world and do my thing. And um, we all take different things from from those those roles. I think. Yeah, I just quickly, I've got another thing as well before we get too far sort of off the, off the subject here. Did, did you and Ian, Sam, both train before jiu-jitsu at Iron Knuckles, Fist Superior, whatever the gym was over Ellingham? Or was not it just your brother? Not before, no, because in fact, that gym wasn't open before when we started training. But was we used But we used that gym to train when the church hall wasn't open. So me and Ian would go and we would roll there. Yeah. Um, but like for me, personally, I... I not done anything before I started, so I'd not trained or done any kind of martial arts or anything like that before I started. But Ian w wanted to do a MMA class. Um, oh, right. The Sam, the uh, Ben Stewart was running. Yeah. And so he was going down there, and I I went with Ian down there um, to see what it was about, really. And um, Ian wanted to was more interested in that than he was training jujitsu, but. I wanted to train jiu-jitsu and kind of, because the ground game was kind of interlinked between us, we would go to the Iron Fist gym and I right. would show him some stuff. What, what little I knew, I would love to go back and see what that was. And then when Ian first started, he kind of had a bit of a head start because he'd done a little bit with me, but it wasn't like, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know what it's like, it's like white belt showing white belt stuff. So I, God mm -hmm. knows what I was showing him. But one thing I do know is that there was a couple of guys that used to roll down there at the same time um, as, <laughs> as me and Ian. Yeah. And if we thought we were bad, these guys, oh, it was so, we, we kept asking to roll with them. <laughs> they were like, they were like, no, 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 we're just, uh, we're happy over here. We're, Who were these guys? I don't know. I've never seen them. The never, never seen them. Sorry? The Otter? <laughs> no way, no way. The salmon? This was years ago. This is like oh. 2011, 2010. It's, like, it's got to be 2010. Has you reckon it was as late as that? Because yeah. I was trying to fit this into my my line because I well, used to train down there quite a bit. I started. And I remember I started, your brother down there, and I couldn't remember if you both were down there. But I, I started training in 2010. Sam would and, have probably been just carrying Ian's bag or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Ian I, was I do carrying my Ian. bag at that point. And then, and then two months later, I'm carrying this. But now he, um, it was 2010 when I started, which was about June, May or June. No, May it was. Um, it was May 2010 I started, and I'd probably done about six months worth of training before Ian started. So I think Ian started like October, November, something like that, more towards the end of the year. Because the only reason we know this is because me and Loz uh, and Ian, we all watched our old fight videos on an, on an old podcast. Right. And um, it said we looked up the fight date of our first competition, which is, you know, that photo. Is that so the Essex Open? Photo. In fact, we should put that on the website, <laughs> and we will put that on the website because it's brilliant. Um, and it's Was it the Essex, our, Essex Open? Essex. Essex Open 2011. Sorry. Right. And that was my first competition. It was Ian's first competition. Ian had only been training about, yeah, about six months, four, four to six months. Well, he said, he said, he said like, not, maybe was it not even six months, was it? I can't remember now what he said. Yeah, it was something like he that. He converted to that arm bar. And yeah. It looked absolutely brilliant. It was brilliant. And then, and then I do something similar in my fights and don't, don't pull it off, which you, is you literally the story of my life. <laughs> that was a good competition. I, I enjoyed that one. I've got fond memories of that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think, I think even one of my fights is actually on YouTube. I think that was 
that was when I thought that Russian bear or the crazy Russian bear or whatever his name oh, was, the man. geezer from Cage Rage. We'll have to um, get you back on and we'll watch, we'll go back over. Yeah, we'll do a, a, fight oh, anal- terrible. a fight analysis. Terrible, terrible, yeah, terrible. Yeah, but, but honestly, they Ian, are, they are like, cringe worthy to watch. Day, Ian, Ian was like, it's like I, he said, I, I don't know who that is. Like that jiu-jitsu he said every single thing there that I did from that position, I would do differently now. Yeah. Yeah, but, and it was he, really, but it's really interesting that he said yeah. that because I look at it and go, oh, I thought you did really well. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I can review that fight, I can review that fight right here, right now, off memory. It was me knuckling up, probably weighing at about 102 kilos against someone who told me they weighed in, I think it was 104, uh, uh, yes. sorry, 100, 144 kilos or something ridiculous like that. Oh. And he literally is twice the size of me, and it's basically about five minutes of him rhino ball aiming. We were, we were then, talking about And then about me that. just armbarring him and him being really pissed off about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I remember losing it. I remember I, I one English Open I got submitted by a guy and it's the first time I got submitted in a competition and I lost it. <laughs> I, was like, I was like smashing the mat in my hand going, oh, fuck. And then the guy, the guy actually come up to me. Yeah, like, my brother <laughs> is. <laughs> The guy come, come up to me and was like, are you, are you all right, mate? And I was like, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm just hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was going to win this. Oh, I'm so annoyed. So what, um, chairs, right? Like competition, like we, as soon as we're talking about competitions then, so you, you, wanted, you, you entered the um, grappling industries, but the other guy pulled out, right? But are you seeing more competitions in the future? You want to do some more of those? or I, I was... The main reason why I was really annoyed about that was because that was part of a bigger plan for me. That was going to be my first sort of inaugural black belt competition. And that was, hopefully I would have done okay and my confidence would have sort of been uh, sort of validated almost. And then that for me was going to genuinely be the first of, of a big push to really go for it this year. Um, I had plans to sort of be competing every month, maintaining my training. I even sort of had a chat with my wife and said, look, I really want to go for it. Because obviously, same as you boys, age is is quickly becoming a a limitation for for a reasonable level jiu-jitsu yeah and i don't care what anyone says you know every every year that you get older it, it does get harder and you throw a couple of kids into the mix you throw a big mortgage into the mix yeah. life, life, life really into the mix giving, oh injury well yeah I've, life I've, gets in the way man life life gets in the way that's simple yeah. as that. So, so sitting here rapidly approaching 39 i mean by the time we come out of this nonsense i'm going to be pretty much 39 I gave myself probably realistically another two years of going as hard as what I can now and really trying to make, make myself, not a name, but just just push the boundaries one last time. Test, test yourself, see what you can do. Because, yeah, yeah. I, I completely, I'm with you on that. It's, um, it's an odd thing. I haven't competed in uh, quite a few years now. And it, it is, um, you, do, you test yourself so much that you kind of get a bit of confidence from it, don't you? Win, lose, or draw, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You kind of, think, you kind of feel where you are in your category or where, mm. whereabouts you, you know, you kind of fit, you feel like you fit in somewhere. That's where I'm at. So this is what I need to work on or that's where I'm at. That's what I've done. Dan, do you know what's really like brought that home? Like that point you're talking about there, right? Like resonates with me. Like I competed at White Belt like all over Wales, Bristol, uh, the Kent Open, Brighton, all the rest, of, like a lot of competitions I did within maybe 18 months. And um, then I, I, I really hated it. And now I'm feeling more like I want to go and compete some more now. Now I like, you know, maybe more competitive or I've got a game plan. But like the guy that really inspires me to do that is Matt Witt at yeah. training. Like mm-hmm. Matt, Matt. Like he's, I know he's entered, him and Kane like enter a lot of competitions and like um, they win, lose, whatever. They don't care, man. They just come back, they train more. They like look over what they did and they, they want to do it again. Whereas when I used to compete, used to, I used to feel like it wasn't, um, there was no like uh, positivity around like doing it um, and like ha- help to do better next time. But like, you just, oh, like do it or don't do it, whatever. And now I think like it's like it doesn't matter, you know, like it's a season, you do it, you train, you compete. Yeah. And I think Matt, Matt and Kane have really like to me, you know, like I've, I've been around this, you know, stuff for much longer than them. But they've they've taught me that, 
like it's not about whether you win or lose, but you want to get involved, right? And like go and then you then you go, you something happens, you come back, you learn, you talk to instructors and, and whatever. But like and they're, I, a testament, they're a testament to how good you can get from that as well. They they they're the guys that are excelling at Bluebell because of it. Yeah. But they're but they're putting all that work in, that effort, and they're competing and they're doing everything that you would say, Oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. They do all of it all the time and um they've got, a, they've got an admirable momentum about their their training though because like you say they'll compete and they'll, they'll either get smashed up or they'll do a load of smashing up but but win lose or draw monday evening they're, 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 they're the texting back. the whatsapp saying chez are you there for privates because i want to get in there at six you know yeah, yeah they're not whether they win or lose they still want to train yeah and it's that momentum that they've got that i think is going to just really carry them boys far far into the distance yeah Hey, those guys and like I think it's the attitude more than anything else the attitude that like I'm going to put it on the line and um, it doesn't it doesn't actually matter all it's going to show me is that I need to work on this area or that area and I'll mm. come back and I'll train more yeah. and I'll keep training and I'll, I'll learn and I'll ask questions ask the right questions yeah. that are going to help me get better and um, but- it's good man it's like it's a it's a it's a What's the word? You know, I think it's it inspirational. Me. It is inspirational. It pushes yeah. me because I was one that was like, I don't want to compete. I don't want to do that because I was one. I really didn't like it. You know, the anxiety beforehand and this, that, and the other. And now I think, you know what? Like, no, I'm all right. I've got a game plan. You know, I've got a good game. I can do my thing. I'll see what what it's like with other people. It doesn't matter if I lose. It it's fine. But 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 like I think like. 12 years ago my 13 13 years ago my feelings were i have to win otherwise i'm going to be dropped down the pecking order of you know the the white belts you know like i'm not going to be thought of as anything if i don't win and um i think that's different now so uh, that's a positive and and what's like you steve like sam as well and um ian and danny all these guys that compete like all the grades you know that uh, just I, not me mate well, I, I did a blue belt. That was the last Steve, one I competed. <laughs> Steve, Ian, Danny, Luke, all these guys are com- Harry competed through the belt levels, and you look at it, and they're like, they don't care, man. Win, lose, or draw, they put the um, video on the WhatsApp. Everyone can look at it, and it doesn't matter. And you know, do you know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. it's not something to be embarrassed about. It's like all no. a learning curve. I used to love Sometimes. competing though. Com- competing used to sort of give me such a fire inside. That used to be one of my biggest drives was, was always trying to sort of have, have in my mind, right, I know that the English is going to be in November. So come end of August, beginning of September, I'm out of the cookie jar. I'm doing insanity again. I'm doing awful things because do you know what? I want my purple belt or do you know what? Like it's time for me to sort of step up and start attacking for my brown belt. And for me, that was always how I got my, my sort of name notice, my face notice was it's attacking funny. I, it's almost you kind of brought it back to when you got your blue belt, like that you feel like that you needed to compete to be able to get your next, like to level up to your next yeah. belt. But I don't think that's actually the case. Like, cause you're not one of those guys that turns up, you don't you turn up in August. <laughs> you don't go no. get November. You're training every day, like all the time. Like, oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, so yeah, I'll, I'll turn up. Every everyone, month. your instructor and everyone knows how good you are before you get before you got there do you know what i mean like i know what you're saying though maybe it's yeah. like, that's well, like you, the icing on the cake that's you're, saying you're just like coasting under the level and then you do something spectacular that people go fuck that guy is really fucking good and he's just got a gold medal in the purple belt division. he needs his brown belt yeah yeah for, for me because i i mean i've done a little bit of of, of teaching i've done a, a sort of a, a little bit of, a, of the, the private lessons and teaching and, and bits like that but that's never been my my jujitsu journey you know my jujitsu journey has been train jujitsu be utilized jujitsu in a self-defense fashion and sort of get my name out there because i'm, I'm never going to open a, an academy i'm never going to have my own school my my way of sort of projecting me as a person as an as a belt was to to get a silver at the english was to go and fight 148 kilo geezer at the essex open sort of thing it was always a competition route I've said and there's been a few of the younger lads I've said look it's, it's a very good way of getting through the belts not quickly but efficiently you know because 
you can sit as an, as a, as an average Joe in a white belt section, in a blue belt section. But look, we've, we've just spent five minutes talking about Matt and Kane and we're talking about them because they turn up competitions and smashing up, yeah. you know? Yeah. And for me, it's just always the way to do it because I, I loved it. I enjoyed it. It used to give me focus. Uh, and I know I'm really happy to say that, here that you're thinking of competing again, Nick, because I know that we've spoken in the past about you sort of getting really anxious about it, where for me, I, I was almost the opposite end of the scale. And for many of those fights, certainly sort of as I've got higher up in the grades, a week out, a couple of days out, I feel like I'm a caged lion, like literally about to get let in the, the gladiatorial <laughs> arena. And that, that emotion for me is, is amazing. because that's, that's like the complete opposite of what I feel like before competition. <laughs> I'm like that. Oh God, here it comes! Oh, here it comes! <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've had sort of gone into competitions. I mean, there was a year. I think it was the the last year as a purple belt before I got my brown belt, where I got the double silver, and I just I just knew I, I trained so hard for so long, and stepping into into that uh, into that competition, knowing that pff, it just doesn't matter who's there because I'm so confident in my ability and how hard I've trained that. It's going to be a good day. Yeah. It's going to be a good day. And I've always sort of managed to saddle my emotions by just knowing that you you always, we always, lose a draw, this is going to be an awesome day out and there's going to be some cracking jiu-jitsu and there's going to be some good fights. And that's what I'm here for. It's funny how you talk about your path not being a teacher, whereas I feel it's kind of the opposite. Because I like seeing you teach and your teaching style. I think you really well suited to it. I think you do a really good job. And I think, um, like, you know, there's times when you help me out with the basics classes have been brilliant. So it's funny how you don't see yourself as a teacher, but you've got a lot to share. Oh, and, and I do enjoy teaching, you know, it's something that, well, that's all part of the plan. You know, like I said, I reckon I've got two years where I can still go absolutely batshit crazy in terms of competitions and try and really scalp some, some competitions and hopefully get some gold medals as a black belt. Because in my point of view, that's the ultimate. You can, you can, you can get double gold as a white belt, but yeah, that just means that you're a shit blue belt. And I've heard that get said much, so many times. But if you get a gold medal at a black belt, yeah, Ian, you're, you're, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ian, you're as high as you can go. If, if you're winning competitions at a black yeah. belt, you know that your jujitsu is absolutely solid. You know yeah. that your jujitsu is is on point. Um, and but the the problem that I've always had is because of of my career because of my shift you know I work that pattern of of a shift which moves along one day every week it's, it's basically on an eight day rotation and unfortunately because of that I've never been able to go do you know what right Sam's got the got the Monday's fundamentals I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give myself the Thursday afternoon class sort of thing mm -hmm. because I can do a couple of weeks and then my shifts have moved again and then I can't do a couple of weeks. There'll always be some fucking brown belt that wants, you know what I mean, that's got a step That's what's it on that teaching slot. But, but in the future, I, I want to I wanna teach some more. I want to yeah. teach some more. I think you should. I think, I think you, you, you've, um, for the amount of time you've been, you know, a, a high level guy, you know, from purple belt all the way through to, to now, like, um, I think uh, your your teaching. So you, you haven't done a lot, and there's there's like um, it makes it very hard to spar with you. And I think there's a lot that you can uh, impart. To be honest with you, there's a lot that people don't get from sparring with you that you could teach. Um, it's just it's just taking that away from competition to like a teaching. Uh, position you know what i mean yeah but I, but you're, when, I when you're training you're training and you want to spar and you spar super hard and like you know i've seen you on like various saturdays where i'm like fuck and then you grab me and you go right i want to i want to train some of this so we're going to start from this position i think fuck well, uh, have i got well, you, you boys saw it you boys saw it building up for that last competition i mean you, you saw <laughs> there, there was days oh, where oh, i knew no. Partner, you know, and you say, I want to start from here, and I'm like, Jesus, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's the most unnerving thing is when someone goes, Yeah, you can start in the mount, and you're like, What? No, you're like, My mount's not that great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I think Steve's got like, he, he, he doesn't, um, it's very modest, but like, he's got a lot from a lot of. <clears throat> positions and um a lot that you can teach you know in the basics and uh, advanced like you can you can mix between the two but like there's 
you epitomize doing something that you like doing well and uh and perfecting that area you know and mm. it's incredibly frustrating when i i train you know certain positions that that completely counteract what you do and it's that's why it's such a hard experience to try and like train with you so it makes me feel sometimes like oh god I am getting nowhere with what I'm tra- trading, you know, because you, you, you pass the guard so easily and stuff. But I forget sometimes that you've been doing it for such a long time that, mm. you know, you've got your game is like so crisp in those areas. It's just, it's really difficult because you, you make it look easy. But I think you, c- you could impart a huge amount of knowledge onto the other, other members and stuff of the club. And, um, <laughs> Is that kind of the idea behind uh, what to do BJJ, like the teaching aspect, like your Instagram page? So if you don't follow what to do BJJ, do so. It's awesome. It's a good page. Mm. That was a total lie, Sam, but quite convincing. No, it was was really good, mate. It was really good. It's motivational and it's got, and I presume, what's to come. Because it's quite, it's a fairly new page, right? Yeah, it's it's probably, I think, probably not even a year old. But there was, um, there was some good, there was some good logic behind starting it up. It was me and Harry. You've met my friend Harry from, from the... Mm. He looked wicked in competitions. We've seen him at competition as well. He's a top boy. He's a top boy. We went on the English, I think, and... Sam and I were both shouting ludicrous things at him and he done brilliant at the English Open, man. Yeah, he did. Like, he looked really, really good. I think you gave him a stripe after the comp, I think. Yeah, well, I've given him a couple of stripes. Oh, he's, double, man, looks really good. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's actually, unfortunately for him, he's, what well, he, fortunate however you look at it, he's one of the guys who's volunteered to go off and do some of the grim stuff he's doing up in London at the minute, so I'm not going to see him for a few months now, but... But he, yeah, so he was like, dude, you should really sort of do something in terms of social media. And I, 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 mate, I didn't even know how to turn Instagram on, so to speak. That's how old I am now. And we got going, but there was some, there was some good ideas behind that page. But then, yeah, pretty much as soon as I started that, I had my daughter. Uh, going from one kid's, one child to two children is a, as you know, Nick, that's a game changer. Oh, um, then ha- having a toddler who's just turned four, that's just a, a, a life changing event as well. And now of all this nonsense, like. It's, it's a shame because the ideas that we had regarding that page has just never manifested. Yeah, but, but they can, you know, it doesn't, it's, oh, not, it's not a race, is it, to get these things up, like out there. You got, you just got to take your time and just make sure that your, your content is good. Yeah. You know, don't worry about what, like how quickly you're getting it out there and how much stuff you've got on there, but just, you know, it'll come, mate. It's, but, it's a good. Yeah, you've got, you've got so much to offer. I think, yeah, well, because the idea behind it all initially was that because my my style is quite sort of basic, but I've always kind of like enjoyed the self defense aspect of it. It was going to be aimed at almost like in my mind, it was going to be when you're sitting on the toilet and everyone has a little look through Instagram when they're sat on the toilet. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to think of 30 second snippets where I could go right instead of doing this, think about this, this grip, that grip, especially from like closed guard and things like that. And in my mind, I was going to be like, I could try to give you absolute wisdom, but in 30 seconds. In 30 huh. seconds, I could change everything that you do from the closed guard. In 30 seconds, I could show you one tiny little adjustment that will give you a 25% increase on arm bars from closed guard or from mounts and stuff like that. Yeah. And hopefully, in, in the future, that will be what comes. But during definitely this business... Do yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all fans it's all are come. literally about this big these days. Like, no one... You know, I can't tell you how many times I've just flicked through... If I see a technique on on Instagram and it's, you know, and it goes into Instagram stories, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll watch it later. But I haven't got time for that. Yeah, yeah, and, and, exactly. And, so, and to be honest, my game isn't really sort of targeted for those four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten step moves. It is right. I'm going to do this. Going to secure the arm, and I'm going to arm by you, or I'm going to do I this, and I'm going to stu- choke you, or I'm going to do this and I'm going to hunt the wrist. Yeah. Sorry? You're doing yourself a disservice because I think that you do a lot of stuff that you take for granted now after a decade of doing it. Oh, I'm gonna just gonna hold you there, Nick. I, I've actually my I first grappled in 1999. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me, was it? <laughs> in 1999, that was my first ever grappling experience. That is amazing. Yeah, I had I had my first fight in 2001. I've did, got you fight, of me. did you used to fight MMA, Steve? Or was that... uh, my first fight was this weird 
I can't even remember the rules, but the rules were weird. Like you could kick someone in the in the guts, but you couldn't kick them in the head. You could punch them in the, the neck, but you couldn't punch like them in the face. Pancras rules. Yeah, it was my, it was open combat sports. It was down in Bristol or somewhere like that. Open hand, but no like close strikes. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Pancras. Yeah, I think Pancras because Linton fought Pancras, so I'm pretty sure I'm sure that you had a bash at that. Back I think the... I remember seeing Linton fight because we all, the old um, Ashton Valley Pseudo crew went up to somewhere in London and watched a, a Pancras tournament. And I vaguely some, remember him uh, being there. He fought some big names as well, man. Like, yeah. they... Mate, we, we forget, let, let's just quickly do this, this topic, this subject now. We forget the pedigree of, of what Ashford has had go through it and what Ashford has now. Yeah. You know, it's... I've been listening to a lot of the uh, Raspberry 8 podcast lately and you, you hear people sort of talking about, oh, back in the day 92, back in the day 94, or oh, this was like the birth of UK Jap- jiu-jitsu and grappling. And I'm looking here at my list going, man, I was, I was doing stuff in 97. I was grappling yeah. in 99. And I was, I, I was fighting in Bristol in 2001. So <laughs> yeah, I've been mate. around. I have been yeah. around. And I was, I was very, very lucky to have... Um, Call the wife. Some, some big names. We're, a, we're in a weird like area. There's a lot of people, like you know, from you know uh, Warren, Berry, Ben, Sam Stewart, yourself. These guys around like John Linton. These guys, Laurie. Jack, had don't fights. don't ever forget Jack, Jack as well. Jack, Jack lived ten miles down the road. Yeah, these guys are having MMA MMA fights. You know, back then, like. But for the like, real old school crew. 2000, 2001. Yeah, but for the real old old school crew, I mean, there was there was bigger names as well. We had um, a guy called yeah, Craig Amer yeah. training with us. Can you remember Craig Amer? Yeah, I remember Craig. He used to work on the door with John. Yeah, Dunn. can you remember Lee, Lee, Lee Ambrose? Yeah, I know Lee, yeah, yeah. These, these were guys that had sort of European heavyweight kickboxing. I don't want to fight with Lee Ambrose, Craig Amer, any of these boys, man. Like, but th- those boys were the boys. They were, they were who I was training with. They were, I was so, they, so lucky. Have a look at what they used to do. Like, I think... Uh, uh, Lee still does um, some bare knuckle, bo- like bare knuckle fighting, like uh, oh, really? on some channel on yeah, something. Yeah, I know. What I used know to be, go. I was on Bravo, right? But Lee, Lee, like if you YouTube um, Lee Ambrose's uh, and Craig Amar. Craig Amar, Craig Amar, more on the bare knuckle scene there. Like I think he's won a lot of fights, and he's he's KO. If you want to see some uh, KOs, like you see. Uh, uh, Craig do back in the day, you know, outside a nightclub, then check check out the YouTube, like, because <laughs> it is unreal, unreal, mate. So, so coming on this, I had had some preparation. Like I said, I've got a, a list of of the timeline here, and it was just a mad, mad sort of baptism of fire. The early days, because like you said earlier, like it's a bit, it's a bit of a short sell to sit here and go, ah, oh, I got my blue belt in six months, like giving it the big fat cigar, because that's that's nonsense. What you have to look before that is is the 11 years of grappling. It's the 11 years I train with. That's crazy, years. man, that you, you just know? did like yeah. all sorts and like then that culmination was finding a sport that you loved and then that, that was the thing you stuck with. Well, for me, it was always an evolution of self-defence. I, and I think that's why my game is, is still kind of a bit bread and buttery because I got into jiu-jitsu off the back, almost like as a byproduct of doing... MMA and it wasn't even MMA it was it was Valetudo you know that was that was what I yeah. got into and to say oh, I just sort of picked up training jiu-jitsu does almost myself and a few of the other boys a massive discredit because it wasn't oh do you know what it's 2009 I fancy going to train some jiu-jitsu it was do you know what like I've trained with some big hardcore people for many many years as well right it's different to what you were doing like you, you, you know it, it, it's been a gi you know it's different to what you were training in for like a decade so you, but, you, you, but it's an easy transition, you know, it's an easy transition. If, you're, if you can grapple, you can grapple wearing a gi or you can grapple doing a no-gi. And I think I, I quite enjoy every now and then on the Saturdays, as some of you might have seen, is doing a bit of gi, but then going and hanging over in the dark side with the no-gi videos, boys, mate. like with Chris and, and Nathan and that. And well, after you might destroy I, me, you go to destroy other people in a different suit. Is well, I'm a right? bit of a tart, you know, I'm going to have a bit of everyone. But it's, it's quite nice, especially to roll with, with Chris and nice. Nathan in particular. Because you sort of you sort of go right. All right, I'll, I'll take my gear. Off. I've done a, I've done my hour session with Nick. He's done. He's no good to me now. I'm <laughs> going to go, go and roll with uh, Nathan. Surprise! It lasts an hour. 
It's, it's nice to see the looks on their face where they go, ah, oh, really? Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that gives me a... That gives me a that gives him pleasure. And yeah, no, I, I, take, I take pleasure from uh, going into the dark side. And, uh, and you, so when you, when you spar and when you roll at jiu-jitsu, you kind of see it as like... When you're rolling, it's not like as the sport of jiu-jitsu, you're kind of thinking of it from more of a self-defense aspect. Um, is that right? Or? Um, for, for me, in the early days of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, it was just a continuation of Vale Tudo, but without the kicking and the, and the striking sort of thing. I think nowadays, but for me, I also done it for different reasons as well, because the early days of my life was all door work. Mm. Quite a big sort of section of my life. Quite oh, a big... I remember, man. I remember you. That is, man. That used to be brilliant. I, again, I, I don't want to get my cigar back out, but I was there. You know, I was there. You talk about oh, the Rams. I was there. Kales. I was there. NV. I was there. I, I, I've been around the block. Do you work NV with John Weir? Yes. Yeah. I remember once in Canterbury, because John used to drop, like, me, Kieran... Uh, Phil, like some of the, some of the lads, like um, John. John was a anyone doesn't know John Weir. Like John's a purple belt uh, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he fought uh, Michael Bisping back in the day. Like uh, MMA. Like John's a great boxer, kickboxer, and stuff. Like good guy. Like John a lot. Hang on, just I, quickly. Still to this day, John is the hardest motherfucker I've mm. ever met. <laughs> ever. Well, he, he was that. To work when he, when John worked the doors, he used to drive because he used to stay a lot at my house, like and he used to drive me and my pals. And he's so he's a bricklayer, so he had a, his van, the Millennium Kangoo, and we get in the back, he drive us to wherever he's working, we get out, go on the piss, then get back to where John was working, and then we get a lift home. And it worked out perfectly, unless John was in a massive fight. <laughs> 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 then he wasn't so keen to let him drive us home. I, I first worked with, with John, I reckon, in 99 in Kales. Me and him done a spell in Kales together. I loved you in Kales because I used to come there as a patron and you had the best haircut and the best blazer. Uh, you looked amazing, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> this is where like anyone who doesn't know why Steve's nickname is Chez. Can you explain quickly? Uh, <laughs> very, very, yeah, very easily and very quickly. Basically, I, I had a very, very rough ride into working in nightclubs. I, at the age of 18 and 19, I looked 13 at best. <laughs> um, I had the physique of a girl, a well built girl, but it, it was feminine. <laughs> well built, well um, And I had the most beautiful blonde hair down to here. <laughs> um, and I just basically looked like the sort of person that shouldn't have been a doorman, certainly not in 1999, when the rest of them looked like Lee Ambrose and, and George and, and Nobby and people like that. Nobby, and, yeah. and basically, when I first started working at Flatfoot Sam's, there was a, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use names here because people might hear this and get the ump about it, but there was a, a manager there who, who took a particular dislike to the fact that I was getting more female attention than he was <laughs> and and one day just went oh look out here comes chesney orcs again <laughs> and there was a, a few other people there again nameless doorman who are now good friends of mine but a, a period of time They're nameless were like, and at carlson gracie ashford uh, yeah there's a couple of people but again i think they were like, they were like who's this woman who's just turned up who's getting paid to steal our our girls so basically the name chesney kind of stuck around as a bit of a uh, a bit of an insult a bit of a tarnished name but then over the years as i was choking people out and sort of like throwing people in rivers and stuff I can up, and got accepted. chesney turned into Ches, and Ches. Uh, more people knew me as Ches than they did as steve and to be honest there's yeah. still people now who don't even know my name steve so this no, i people. think it was about two years i think it was about two years into jiu-jitsu before i realized your name was steve but i've <laughs> like, always called you steve because i've always known you as steve it's like, so when I say Steve, people are like, who the fuck are you talking about? Can I be excused just quickly? Can I be excused literally for two seconds? I can hear my, my little boy crying. I'm just gonna have yeah, to go on, mate. Yeah. Two seconds, two seconds. I know exactly what he's talking about, though. Sometimes, mate, those names, they just find you. Do you know what I mean? You don't choose 
<laughs> she uses those names, but it's like me. Do you not? Do you not, Cad File? <laughs> I thought, what? Okay, oh, sorry? I think it's Wolverine. Is it, is, uh... <laughs> I've never heard anyone call you Wolverine in my life. <laughs> what are you on about? I don't know. Time. I, I, we haven't experienced this before in the podcast either when a guest uh, decides that they're going to leave. Usually when we're recording with the p- proper equipment, Oh, he's back. We can we can edit that. We can. <laughs> we're not going to edit that out because it was quite a fun little conversation. No, right, I'm back. Sorry about that. It, um, um, yeah, so, so I'll just I'll just continue. I'll just continue. Yeah. yeah so what back. was a, a massive sort of insult turned into be my nickname, and then it almost over the years turned into a bit of a gangster alias, and uh, <laughs> that was my that was the bad side. It was great. <laughs> Jazz. Yeah. So I could go and see my nan and Steve, but then I could go and kick people's heads in in a nightclub and, and get called Chez. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You always Steve to me, Steve. Oh, just, okay. just quickly. I never used to kick people's heads in. I was the nicest doorman you've ever met. And that's why I lasted so long. Whenever you threw me out, like it was always a pleasure to be honest. <laughs> well, genuinely, genuinely. <laughs> that's why I lasted so long. <laughs> I, oh, oh, mate, I, I, you had a you had a fucking rough ride in some of those places you worked in, man, as well. Like, mate, mate, mate if if I could, I, I knew I was going to make it because I survived flat for Sounds and Cows. I, oh, mate, that the was a like, team. Butter, fifteen years of age, mate. That's where I used to go. Fifty whole, peer pint, fifty peer shot on a Thursday. Yeah, it was like a it was like the Wild West, though. Yeah. Oh, mate, my mum used to, my mum took my sister to a parents' evening. She went to Highworth School in Ashford. All right, so she dropped me off down there, six o'clock, opens, right, flat east. So I go in there with my mate, Jason, right? Do you remember Jason Davis? Jason Davis? Steve? I think I do. I think I do, yeah. yeah Jason and Gara. Anyway, we went in there, drank, and then my mum picked me up at nine, and I'd already been sick outside. <laughs> oh. It was only me and Jason in there, seven doormen, in Kales, up because you could go up at that point. You could go up at that time of day. You couldn't do that in any normal realm of the world. No. But back in, I don't know, a long ago. 1963. 1948. <laughs> no, you, 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 it's 50p a pint, 50p a shot. You're having a joke. Like, it was amazing. Well, that, this is quite funny because it was only a couple of weeks ago this this conversation came up with my wife. So, uh, so there's, there's two little stories off of the back of that. But, yeah. Uh, Easter, it was the Good Friday. It was the Thursday night before Good Friday that they'd done 50p a pint up there. <laughs> it was best. And, and I went up there with one of my best friends called Dave and we got so, so, so drunk that I remember having to phone in sick on the Tuesday morning because <laughs> I was still hungover. And I honestly thought I was going to die. My mate, like, done this Vietnam sort of carry. He literally dragged me back to my house because I was, I was just more or less dead. <laughs> It was uh, it was horrible. Yeah, sure. was it? Oh mate, it, well no, it was fifty p a drink. It was literally fifty p a drink. Fucking hell! It was yeah, you know, any drink was fifty p. I used uh, to see Steve down there, like when he wasn't working, he would come down there just to scope the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you look at Chesney, before, before he got married, because this is way before. This is a long time ago, you know. Well, this like, is more or less black and white days, mate. This is this is this is way yeah, back in the day. There'd be all that me, Kieran, like there'd be all these people down there, like who would just be having a laugh and a joke. But mate, it was dark days sometimes. With yeah, the, it was uh, like the Wild West back then. I, like, oh, I in Africa, like the plague. Nobby used to show me the keyring of him when he was a wrestler. Yeah, the keyring of himself as a wrestler, Nobby. Um, if you don't know Nobby, Sam, you're too young. I don't know Nobby. Well, because Nobby basically took me under his wing as his apprentice, and and this is this is pretty much where my whole life did my door training, wrong. my training at, uh, in Folkestone. Yeah, door. mission mission security. Yeah, yeah, hundred pounds, hundred pounds, you'd be a doorman. <laughs> <laughs> you could earn that night, boy. Well, you could. <laughs> I was I was the richest nineteen year old in the world, mate, back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. I had a brand new Corsa SXI in 1999. I'm king of the world, mate. What's your name, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> but but another quick another quick Dorman story, and then we'll move on. Go on. First, I started working at Kales. Uh, you you might remember this. There was a Thursday night where some some drunken old woman was doing the membership desk, 
And me and my mates went up and went, oh yeah, can we, can we join up? Because you could join up for nothing. It basically meant you could get in for free or something and get discounted drinks. And we managed to completely blag it. And this was probably when I was 15, 16, I think the first time I managed to bunk in there. Basically then when I filled in my employment details at, at age 19, uh, the manager at the time was like, can I just check something with you, Steve? How old are you? I was like, I'm 19. And she went, why have we got you registered as a member and basically done the maths and you're 27? <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do like, uh, I remember going in the, in the queue, right, to get into flat plays and the guy going, no, not coming in, not coming in. Because I'm like 16 or something. I went and changed. Do you remember Chris Smith, Ches? Yeah. Yeah, right. So Chris was a good mate of mine at school. He's in my, my class. We switched shirts, come back, and he's like, yeah, yeah, crack on. Well, because it was even easier than that. Back in the day before I started working there, if you got turned away from Cowles, you could go to Flatfoots knowing that 11 Yeah, but you could go up the stairs, couldn't you? Or if you got turned away from Flatfoots, you got in through Cowles. So you, yeah, you had a, you, had a... Either or, you can get up the stairs to one or the other internally. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was just... another... That was another one of those double jeopardy ironies. There was uh, like about a six month period where George would be going, mate, go away, go away. You haven't got ID, you can't come in. And then yeah, six months later, it was like, all right, George, all right, George, I'm on the door with you tonight, son. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd be like, oh, great, oh, great. I've got that 13 year old girl working me again tonight. <laughs> As you're like tossing yeah, your hair. But I've got lovely hair. Oh, but all right, I look, Steve, lovely, yeah. man, I've got a few quick fire questions for you um, to see because uh, I don't know how long we've been going now, but it's been a while and we it's could been do about an hour and a half. Of these. So we need to start right. Well, we'll do another one of these soon. And um, yeah, we haven't even talked. So, Ches, you went to uh, you went to Rio, so I'd love to talk. Oh, about shit, yeah, no, we, Rio, we like to training in Rio, so but we'll. Cool. We'll save that for another one, I think. Yeah, yeah I've got the evil off my wife. So, uh, okay, right, last bit then. Quicker. Okay, like I've got quick five questions, okay, on uh, Carson Gracie Ashford. Right, these are quick questions. Let's do it. Are you ready? Star of the future. Little Tommy, for sure. Tommy Mahoney. Yep. He's most, my boy. Oh, most technical. I think it's going to end up being Kane. Kane, man, cool. Strongest guy. Daz, man, Daz, Daz's oh, strength scares Daz. me. Yeah, he's so he's fucking good, good though, as well. Daz is yeah. so good. Really? Like, well, I, it, it's because he, he, I mean, he's strong. He's one of the strongest guys you've ever seen. Pound for pound, he's got to be one of the strongest guys. But he, yeah, he but knows like, that, like, like, he, he applies it at the right angles and with the right pressures. So he, he feels like a. He feels like what you would imagine a 150 kilo guy to feel but he like. he doesn't do it when he doesn't have to. No, 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 no. no. And, and that's not an insult to him. I mean, he, he's just very blessed to have. Like Peter as well. Like, Peter's te- like both of them real technical. Like, like I love rolling with Daz because, like, you can te- do techniques together, you know, without you knowing he's going to, like, hurt you. But he, he look, he's a scary looking dude, right? But he's fucking strong and he's very good at jiu-jitsu. Right. Okay, next question. Looks the most like Father Cadfile and the least like Wolverine. <laughs> Does he have the brother called Ian? He might do. <laughs> the Wolverine. Ah, we won't embarrass him. Favourite training yeah. partner? It's got to be you, Nick, isn't it? Basically. Oh, he fished for that, didn't he? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I did, Sam. <laughs> My, uh, my, uh, hang on. Uh, uh, my favourite my favorite training partner, if I've been honest, is Luke. Luke's my benchmark, man. Luke Holness. Mm. Yeah, because I have to, I have to be on my A star game. Yep. Just to hang in there with him, so mm-hmm. I know if I'm hanging in there, I'm having a good session, and if I'm not, then I'm getting messed up. So it's a win win scenario. Yeah, he, that's good. Good answer, man. Luke is unbelievable. Like I love just watching him spar. It's I love like, with Luke. Yeah. yeah, I love watching you roll with Luke as well. <laughs> because he does to me what I can do to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Favourite submission? You all know that. I don't even need to oh, dignify it. Yeah. I was going to say, you mentioned it a few times. Yeah. But, but, but having said that... The... You've got some great chokes as well, yeah, man. I was going to say, if, 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 I, if I ever get in a situation where like, someone's drunk or thought... party or something, and someone goes, oh, show me some jiu-jitsu. Show an arrow. It's, no, no, no. It's the rear naked choke. Mm. The rear yeah. naked choke is, is the most bread and butter 
street. I thought you were going to pick, pick a bow and arrow. I thought you were going to well, pick a bow and arrow. Well, I no. see Chez is, Chez, for me, like what am I most worried about? It's his bow and arrow and armbar from God. Yeah. Those two things, right, are fucking good. Like, fuck. Top <laughs> or bottom? You want to be in guard or you want to be on top? Mate, you know my strategy. Plan A, plan B. Doesn't matter. I love top it. And bottom. <laughs> top, if you get swept, then he's got to go. Look, bottom half guard. Oh, hey. <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs> 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 We're bottom Friends. feet. Awesome feeders. <laughs> do what we can. We do what we can. We do what we can. Well, that's all I've got. Have you got any uh, quick questions, Sam? Just, for chairs? I'll just, I'll just elaborate on Plan A or Plan B because there might be some people out there who, who aren't privileged to Plan A, Plan B, as well as uh, you in particular, Nick. <laughs> but plan A is, is, as always, you want to dominate. You want to control the, the top position. You want to get to mount, and you want to take a mount position or force them into back. That's Plan A. If at any point that they roll you or sweep you or, or, or bugger up plan A, you go to plan B and you immediately just want to get to close guard as quick as you can. And then you can submit there or sweep and it all starts from plan A again. And that is, that's my strategy. That's my jiu-jitsu strategy in 10 seconds. It's a pretty good strategy. It's a pretty good strategy. Here it is, a number it, of occasions. It's got me this far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the black belt level, yeah. Steve is doing that and he's still fucking, he goes to me, the other time he's like going, oh, um, I've been practicing this um, new choke from this position that I haven't really tried before. And the second time he goes, yeah, it's like, like you're the first one. Like I've done it on white belt, blue belt, and now you've not allowed me to do it. And I said, yeah, oh, yeah, it's because uh, I did this. And he goes, oh, okay, so we start rolling again. And then he goes, right. And then he did it again. Like he uh, got past my defense. Then he goes, right, that's uh, white, blue, purple. Where's the brown belt? I can <laughs> and I'm there going... Yeah, shit. Like, and then eventually he did it all the way up to black belt. He's like, okay, I know this technique works. And I know what people at different grades are going to do to counteract the technique. I know now how to get past their defense and then do another technique. Well, yeah, that's like, turned off. That, that technique right, got fucking turned off weak. Black belt. Fucking give me a break. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? I need longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> and to answer your question, if I've got any quick fire. Questions for yeah, go on. Have you got any questions for Steve, quick? No. Oh, guess Nick's age. It, it was his 50th, okay. wasn't it, last week, a couple of weeks ago? Sorry, younger than you, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you believe it. Look at her. Look no one would ever guess that, would they? No. <laughs> Mate, there's a, there's a thousand witty there, things I could say to that, Nick, but I just don't need to, to even rise to that. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, look, look, like... Thank you so much, Steve, for coming on and chatting to us. And we're going to have to do this again and like have a bit more of a technical jujitsu chat. But like, it's a good overview of everything that you're doing. And um, like, well, I, feel, I feel a little bit bad, mate, because basically we just spent an hour and a half waffling because we haven't seen each other for six weeks. <laughs> we we barely it. spoke it's about any of the stuff. Podcasts alike, mate. So I don't worry about it. It's awesome. Um, and also, we'll definitely go over like your travels that you've done, like a bit of training here, there and everywhere. You trained at a lot of different clubs and stuff as well. So we'll, we'll go into that on, uh, on another session, but we'll let you get back to your family and stuff. Thanks, guys. But well, yeah, it's, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. And yeah, anytime you want to do this, because, um, well, yeah, so I mean, I, I can walk for What hours. Instagram should people go and follow? Uh, I, don't want, I don't want to do that just yet because it's, it's nothing of any substance there yet. And you're just What's basically... What's BJJ? Go and follow it. It's awesome. You're going to see yeah. me just moving some rusty weights in the garden and trying to do handstands. That's pretty much what you're going to see on that for, for now, the next for now. indefinite time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate seeing you, dude. I'll okay. see you boys on the flip side very soon, all right? Wow. Yeah.